Okay, next we create our first bolt. Um, so this is a split sentence bolt. So it'll take the stream of sentences and emit a stream of words. Um, so to, to find the bolt, we give the bolt an ID of, called split. Um, the implementation is this split sentence object, and we'll, we'll look at the implementation of this in a second. Uh, and we give this a parallelism of eight. So we'll distribute the processing of the splitting across eight tasks. Uh, and then we define the inputs to this uh, bull um, by saying we want to read from the spout component using a shuffle grouping. So spout was what we just defined over here. And here we're saying we want to consume that stream using a shuffle grouping to evenly distribute the load of processing. <coughs> right, so notice here that it's the consumer that decides what data it receives and how it gets grouped, not the producer of the messages, which when you think about it is, is really the right way to think about this processing. Okay, so finally we have our last bolt. So this is the word count bolt. So this processes a stream of words and emits a stream of word counts. Uh, so we'll give this bolt an idea of count. The implementation is word count. Uh, we'll set the parallelism to 12. Uh, and then this bolt consumes its input from the split component, which is what we just defined over here. Um, and it's gonna consume that stream using a fields grouping on the word field. So by doing a fields grouping, um, this causes the same word to always go to the same task but different words may go to different tasks. So we might wonder, okay, why did we do a fields grouping here and not like a shuffle grouping like we did before? Um, well, the reason is that if we did a shuffle grouping, then the same word may go to different tasks. Each of those tasks will have seen uh, an incomplete view of the total number of times that word has appeared, and so it won't really be able to emit the right answer. If you do a fields grouping, um, if a task sees a word, then it knows, oh, I've seen every time that word's been emitted, and they can emit the correct count. Okay, so here's the implementation of split sentence. Uh, I chose to implement this in Python uh, just to demonstrate Storm's multi-language capabilities. Um, so at the top, first we have a small wrapper class which says, oh, I'm actually implemented in Python um, at, the, at the file split sentence.py. And on the bottom, we have the implementation. So all it says is, uh, whenever I receive a tuple, I'm going to take the first value in that tuple, which will be the sentence, split it in white space, and then for every word in that sentence, emit the word as a one tuple. Okay, here's the implementation of word count. Um, uh, so the way this works is it actually keeps the, the state of word count um, actually in, in memory hash map. I just did this for simplicity. You could use a database if you wanted. Uh, but every time it receives a word, it updates the count in that map um, and then emits the new word count, and that's it. Okay, so let's say now you have your topology. Let's say you want to run it on a cluster. Uh, here's what the code looks like to do that. Um, so first what you do is you create a configuration for your topology. Um, this, this configuration is just used to tweak various aspects of how your topology runs. So here we say we're going to set topology workers to 10. So this means there will be 10 physical processes uh, launched across the cluster to do your processing, and then your tasks will be evenly spread across those workers. And then to submit it, you say storm submitter, submit topology, uh, we'll call the topology word count, you give it your configuration, and then you give it the topology you just created. Um, and this will go ahead and upload your code to the cluster, tell Nimbus I want to launch this topology, and then your topology will just run forever um, or until you kill it. Um, Storm also has a local mode uh, in where you can actually simulate an entire Storm cluster in process. Um, this is super useful for development and debugging. Um, and submitting to a local cluster is almost identical to submitting to a remote cluster. So what you do is you create this local cluster object, and then you submit to it the same way. You give it a configuration, and then you submit it. Um, so here we actually um, give it the configuration of, we set this topology debug property to true, and I'll show this in a second, but it has the effect of causing Storm to log a message every time, uh, or log, log, a, log a message every time um, a tuple is emitted anywhere in the topology. Okay, so let me show a quick demo um, of Storm. So, so here I, oops, okay. So here I have the word count topology. So this is exactly what I, what I just showed you, um, except for one difference. Um, rather than read from a Kestrel server, I just have just to keep things simple. I have a spout which just emits random sentences, um, and it just kind of does that from memory. Um, let me run it, and then I'll show you what the spout looks like. Okay, so here you can see this topology running. So here's all the messages being emitted. Um, I have it set to run for 10 seconds and then shut itself down. 
I'm just going to like just let it finish. Okay, so it finished. So if we look at what it was doing, um, okay, so right, so here you can see the the spout emitted a bunch of sentences. Um, so here, like it said, I am at two with nature. Um, and so that you can see is emitted from the spout. And then here you can see um, the word splitter bolt picked it up and emitted I. Um, and then before it even has a chance to emit am, you can see the word count bolt picks up that tuple and emits the new word count. So you can, you can see here how all the processing is happening in parallel and kind of all the messages are interleaved with each other. Okay, so that's the, the basics of Storm. Um, and what I just showed was an example of stream processing. Um, do you have a question? Yeah, just one. Um, so you mentioned it's fault tolerant. Yeah. And obviously with the example, if you were to a worker working on draw and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I guess how do you work around that in non-example way? Um, so if you actually cared about keeping that state, you would probably use a database to store but then the work of all the Workers are talking to the same database, are they have the same problems? Um, ask me the question again after I, I show. I guess you could charge the database. Uh, okay. Well, so you don't, you don't have any, like, as long as um, only one task is ever responsible for one word, you don't have that. You don't have any base conditions. But the task could die, right? Correct. And so it's not, it's a, well, I'll talk to you. Once you see this stuff about fault tolerance, then I'll be able to answer that question better. <coughs> Okay, so let, let me wait until afterwards to answer questions. Um, <clears throat> okay, so this, now I want to show an example of doing distributed RPC on Storm. This is a completely different use case, uh, but it still uses the same abstractions. Uh, so like I was saying in the beginning, the idea behind uh, distributed RPC, I'll just refer to it as DRPC. The idea behind DRPC is to um, take like a function that's um, really intense to compute and distribute the computation of that function on a storm cluster and then invoke it on the fly um, and use storm as an RPC mechanism to get you the results very quickly. Um, so the data flow for DRPC looks like, like this. Um, so we have you on the left and you have some function you want to execute um, and you have some arguments to that function. Um, so what you do is you talk to this DRPC server and storm comes with an implementation of this and you tell the DRPC server I want to run this function with these arguments. And then the DRPC server will actually block, block the request uh, because it doesn't have the results yet. Uh, so the DRPC server can actually act as a source for a spout. So you have your topology running on the cluster, uh, and your spout um, receives a stream of function invocations from the DRPC server. Now every function invocation is a tuple containing an ID for the request, uh, the arguments for that request, which are provided by the client, and then the return info for that request, which is actually just the host and port of the DRPC server. Now your topology picks up that function invocation and does its thing to, to process it um, and then sends, once it has the result, it sends the result to a special bolt um, which takes in the request ID and the result and the return info and then it connects to the DRPC server and it tells it, here's the result for this request ID, the DRPC server maps that request to the waiting client, unblocks the client, sends it back with the, the results. So from the client's perspective, it looks just like normal RPC, in reality it's executing on a storm cluster in the background. Okay, so let me give an example of DRPC. Um, so the example I like to use is computing the reach of a URL on Twitter on the fly. Reach is the number of unique people exposed to a URL on Twitter. Uh, to compute reach, what you have to do is take your URL, then get all the people who ever tweeted that URL, then for each of those people, get um, all of their followers, um, and I have to take that potentially massive set of followers and unique it, and then count the unique set to get your reach. So it's a very intense computation, which for something like a TechCrunch URL can involve thousands of database calls um, and tens of millions of follower records to sort through and, and distinct and count to get your reach. Um, we originally implemented this just on a, a single machine, uh, and it would literally take like over a minute to run for some URLs. It was really awful. We implemented this on a storm cluster, and we got that down to two seconds for the hardest URLs. Um, now, the implementing reach on storm is actually um, very straightforward. Um, and so the topology looks like this. Um, so, you know, to start off with, you have your spout, which is emitting the function indications. And so that's emitting a tuple containing a request ID and a URL. 
Now your first bolt is called, well here it's called get tweeters. So that takes a stream of request ID URL and emits a stream of request ID tweeter ID. Right, so one URL will map to you know, some variable amount of, of, of request ID, Twitter ID tuples. Um, so the next bullet is called get followers. So what it does is it actually shuffles that stream um, to distribute the load of getting the followers. And it consumes a stream of request ID, Twitter ID, and emits a stream of request ID, follower ID. Right, so now you have like, you know, potentially millions of tuples uh, for this request. So the next bullet is called partial distinct. So what this bolt does is it does a field grouping by the follower ID, right? So now the same follower will always go to the same partial distinct task, uh, and then partial distinct will um, will wait until it receives all the tuples. Each task waits until it receives all the tuples directed at it for that request ID. Once that happens, um, it just emits the unique count of the, the subset of followers that it saw. Now the key here is that because it did the fields grouping. Uh, the set of followers each partial, partial distinct task sees are mutually exclusive from each other, right? So they all emit their partial counts, and all that's left to finish and compute the reach is do a global grouping on the stream, sum up the partial counts, and now you have the reach. Okay? So you can see here that the entire computation from uh, getting the followers, doing the uniquing, and doing the counting, it's all fully done in parallel, and it's distributed. So mapping this to code is similarly very straightforward. Um, so this is what the, the reach implementation looks like. Um, so instead of using the topology builder class I showed before, you use this thing called linear DRPC topology builder. This just takes care of all the overhead of um, like setting up the spout and setting up the bolt that returns the results and all that stuff. Um, lets you just focus on the DRPC logic. So to implement it, you say you add a bolt, which is get tweeters, then you add a bolt, get followers, which is a shuffle grouping, then you add the partial uniqueer bolt, which does a field grouping on the ID and follower, uh, and then you add your count aggregator, which does a, here does a field grouping on ID, which is the same as a global grouping for that request ID. How does the partial uniqueer know it got all the... Great question, so I'm gonna answer that next time. Um, so first let me just show what the partial uniqueer implementation looks like. Um, so the way partial uniqueer works is that for the request, it keeps the set of followers for that request in memory, right, just until it receives them all. Um, now, whenever it receives a new tuple, it just adds that follower ID to the set. Um, and then you can see we have this interesting finish batch method um, down below. Um, the idea here is that, so this is called when it receives all the tuples for the, for the batch. Um, and here you can see it just emits the request ID and then the size of the set. Now the way this works is that the linear DRPC topology builder um, wraps some stuff, or uh, kind of like you provide a topology and then it maps that to your actual topology, which has some stuff, extra stuff in there. Um, and one of the things that it does is pr provides the logic to detect when has it received all the tuples for a request. Um, I don't want to dig into the details of this, so one of the things, it uses a special kind of stream called a direct stream. Um, but there's been blog posts written about that, and you can dig into that yourself. Um, it's actually pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, but basically, the energy RPC topology builder lets you implement this base there's this batch bolt interface, which lets you process kind of batches as a first class abstraction, and what that provides you is this finish batch method. Okay, so let me demo the reach stuff. Okay, so what I have here is a closure REPL. Um, so for those of you that don't know about closure, closure is actually a, uh, uh, a dialect of Lisp that runs in the JVM. So I'm just going to use it here to just execute some, some Java code, but just so I can do it interactively. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to create a DRPC server. Um, so just like the regular Storm stuff, the DRPC also has a local mode so that you can develop it um, just locally and do testing on it. So there's my DRPC server. Um, now I'm going to create my local Storm cluster. Right, so there it, you could just, it just log some kind of startup messages. So now I'm going to create my topology. Actually, before I show it, do that. Um, so here's the implementation of reach. Um, 